Welcome to Hockey Nights in Vegas, episode two of season two. We're going to call this the trick or treat episode. My name is Eddie Rivkin. I'm joined as always by Joe Payne of the Las Vegas Advisor. And when we concluded season two, episode one, Joe, I asked you if it was time to hit the panic button. We both pretty much agreed that it wasn't. And no. uh, miraculously, the tricks of uh, week one and a one and four start turned into the treats of week two. And the Golden Knights are four and four, 500 on the year, uh, a huge two game, two night road trip uh, through Denver and Dallas. And then uh, we'll get into last night's, uh, as Pete DeBoer called it, uh, five games in one. But uh, no, no panic. But it seemed like um, getting away from T-Mobile might have been really, really good for them. Yeah, actually, I wrote, I wrote that uh, after the Islander game that them heading on the road might, might be a good thing. Get away from all the noise here in Las Vegas. Because there is, there was a lot of noise with that four-game losing streak, um, and ironically, the, the three games that they have won, they they won in three different fashions. So um, last night, uh, I think they were lucky to to, to get to two points. Uh, they they lost their legs at the end of the game. Arizona had no legs at the beginning of the game. Uh, they just got, what's that? Anaheim. Anaheim, what does I say in Arizona for? Anaheim, uh, they sort of 21 shots, uh, one shy of their first period uh, Vegas Golden Knight record of 22 shots, and I think they had 26 shots as the their all-time record. But the, Gibson played great. He, he always plays great against uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, and he kept that game from being a complete blowout. And unfortunately for Vegas, they kind of, I guess, just – you know, the five games and eight nights and three games and, and four nights kind of caught up with them. And they uh, they lost they lost the gas at uh, about the halfway through the third period. And they let Anaheim back in the game. And then we get to the shootout and, and you and I both looked at each other. And <laughs> this is not good. We, we, st had... we stood up and watched it. We were like, we're, we're yeah. going to we're going to run for the exit. But it was such such compelling viewing that we were literally just standing standing up going, all right, are we well, going to run? The, and I wrote that. The, actually, the whole building was standing up watching it because the, if Vegas would have lost this game last night, they would have got the one point because it got to overtime. This would have been a very devastating loss for them, blowing a three-goal lead with basically 10 minutes to go in the game. You know, if you, if you have intentions of – going deep this season and, and, and you know, r running deep into the playoffs, you you got to lock it down in the third period when you got a one goal lead, when you got a three goal lead and Vegas has been real good uh, in their first four years of protecting uh, one and two goal leads in the third period. But last night, it just, I remember looking at you like I said, this, you even said to me, this, this could be crazy. This could get a little hairy here. And it, and with, about, with about nine minutes to go, I go, I, we're not done. We're not done just yet. And then they score <laughs> to make it 4-2. I, I, I think the, the unusual stat that nobody <laughs> has spoke about, um, if they would have, if they would have, yeah, well, because we're really smart. Um, if they would have lost last night, they would have lost three games in a row at the fortress to teams that were playing on the second night of back-to-backs against a rested Vegas team. Well, now, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call, I, I, that's a stretch calling Vegas uh, a rested team. Okay. On a, uh, Vegas on a day off. Okay. That's better. Call, 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 rested, uh, uh, on, on, a, on a day off. But the, the point is that we've seen the pattern now that, in games that early in the season where teams playing the second game of the back-to-backs, they ha tend to have a pretty bad first period. And I'll cite as the example, the first period against Dallas after the Colorado game and the travel debacle, they were flat and getting pounded like pink veal in Goodfellas. Last night, you don't, you don't, you don't get the reference. <laughs> I had to think about the movie Goodfellas first to refer to that scene. So, okay. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. But and and last night, uh, Anaheim came in and they had cement legs for the first period. And like you said, twenty-one to six shots. 
Gibson prevented the game from literally being over in the first oh, period. Yeah. But 21 to six after one became 42 38 at the end of yeah. the game. So they caught up. They, they caught up. They got their legs and their, their, you know, their, their skating legs under them and they made it a game. And Pete DeBoer said in the press conference, listen, it's early in the season and fatigue is a factor and five games in eight nights. And I, I, I agree with them a hundred percent, this crazy compacted schedule where they're going to play five games in three nights. And now they don't play again until Tuesday, you know, they make the trip across the country, but they have plenty of time to, to get ready for Toronto Tuesday afternoon. There's going to be a lot of strange um, swings as far as, as, um, you know, how the, how the season goes, especially the leading up to the break. And then, you know, the few golden Knights that are going to participate in the, the Olympics while the rest of them are probably off on a, a bit of a vacation. Um, but the big thing is they, they got back to 500. They turned what Pete DeBoer said could have been a disastrous start into, Hey, they're four and four. They're, they're, not where we had thought they would be, but, but they're okay. I think the other takeaway that we should probably talk to is what a great game uh, Brisson had in on the second game oh. of the back to back. I don't, I don't think there's a better game from a backup goalie. I don't think you could have drawn it up better than the game he had as his first game uh, with the yeah, Golden Knights. And, the, and the, the save he made with 25 seconds to go after Marshall so had, tied the game up. That would have been another back backbreaker if if they he lets um, Jordan Ant uh, score there because he made a great save because uh, uh, Sigan uh, threw that puck behind his back and he was he was heading to the left of the net and he had to stick his left skate in and 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 push back and go across there and he got his right pad on the puck. Um, and that that saved the game right there. Else, or else Dallas wins the game, scoring with 25 seconds left to go. Like I said, they the last three games they won, they won in three different styles. Um, unfortunately, the one they won last night should have never been that close. No, it, it, we should have had a lazy, not interesting uh, press conference after the game. But it turns out there was uh, actually quite quite a bit to uh, to unbundle. Um, the only thing that was good, nobody had to ask Pete a question about the power play. Yeah, the, it's because funny. Anaheim, Anaheim didn't take a penalty last night. It, it's funny. I, I can't remember that I I was trolling along on one of the Golden Knights fan pages on on uh, Facebook, and they said they wanted to change the name of it to the Power Kill or the Power Outage. <laughs> and and I'm thinking about Bruce Cusack changing change reading that and accidentally flubbing the line when they go on the power play and i'm thinking that would that would be an epic fail oh um, my god but speak speaking of the fans holy moly joe the hatred is just absolutely off the charts they i'm not go, i'm not naming they names go. they can't let go they can't let go of flurry uh, and and, 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 and revo I, I and I get it. I get it, Eddie. You know, it's these are all new fans, and like we said in the previous podcast, it's like a tree in the ground. You know, when you when you're when you're a original six organization, your roots are so deep in the ground that when you have some sort of turmoil, so to speak, the tree doesn't fall down. But you know, this is a relatively new organization with with a lot of new and not so sharp hockey fans. They're learning, they're getting better, but everything, everything is, you know, a major disaster. And they just, they get so wound up so quickly and so tightly. This, that is, just, this is hate. This is hate. I, I, I told, I, I, I told you I, I was going to cut down on my swearing this year. But it doesn't count me swearing if I'm quoting somebody. Robin okay. Leonard fucking sucks. I I read that. I read uh, that. Okay, Robin Leonard, with the exception of the Los Angeles Kings game two, two right game two, okay. um, 
there hasn't been a real soft goal. He's been hung out to dry. Um, yeah, uh, it just – I can't get over the the undying you know, love you know, you, for Fleury. You know, yeah, you know what it is, Eddie? It's, it's like if your wife or girlfriend left you, no matter – you know, even if you were 100% wrong on why she left you, you just can't get over the hump. You feel betrayed, so to speak. And I think these fans feel betrayed. Um, but but and they don't they don't have the I don't want to say the right. They they have the right to feel anything that they want. But they do. they really 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 have to just pump the brakes a little bit. Obviously, yeah. I don't think I shouldn't say obviously. In my opinion, the, this doesn't have any effect on the room. The room is another conversation that we have to have about leadership probably in another episode coming up soon. But in the meantime, they're very good at blocking out the outside noise. But for you and I, who have some direct contact with the players and with the coach, and also talk to some people and friends and fans uh, online, dude, this is, I mean, it's getting out of control. I mean, it, these people have, they have to pump the brakes. The team is four and four. They have more points than Tampa. They have more points than Colorado, right? They're, oh, they have less points than the Detroit Red Wings. Just had to sneak that in real quick. But the, the, the theme of this little baby rant is it, it, it has to stop. People are, people are hurt. They're, they're getting riled up. And, you know, I feel bad they're going to have, like, ulcers and they're going to be throwing up. And, 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 and you know, listen, Flurry is gone, right? He's not being traded back at the trade deadline to finish his career as a Golden Knight. That's going to end up in Pittsburgh. Anyway, little sneaky prediction right there. But th- this has to stop, you know. And the empty seats and the, the prices going way down, $39 in the upper bowl, well, hey, you know, uh, there's a little bit of shine off the organization with the public, and you know, this is the this is the result of the actions of of management. Your turn. Yeah, Go actually, ahead. Did you see that on the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights have waived the any fees if you buy tickets now off of AXS? There's no fees, and the fees were pretty steep. Like for a hundred dollar ticket, there the fee was twenty five dollars. That's 25% fee. Well, for home games in November and December, they took away the fees, trying to encourage people to buy tickets that, you know, when, when they announced these crowds of 17, 5, 17, 6, or 18,000, there's not that many people in the building. No. Because the tickets, are, any tickets that are pre-bought are counted as a every night. Every, every night. But what happens is there's a lot of seats on – that the team has that they try to sell on AXS, including um, fees, and then and people are not buying it anymore because of the fact that they were upset with the four-game losing streak. They were upset with the, the the personnel moves that were made over the over the summer. So now they, I guess, they're waving a little bit of like uh, extending an olive branch to fans, saying, "Hey, come on back. We'll you know." We'll waive the fees, you know. So, like you said, the other the other episode that we did, what happened to that can't wait list? Uh, that's uh, it's a ain't nobody on the can't wait. Ain't list. nobody on the can't <laughs> wait list anymore. <laughs> no, no, come and get it. All all you can eat tickets. Now you and I are gonna you and I are gonna disagree about this. Um, How do you know that? How do you know we're gonna disagree? Uh, the point I'm about to make, you and I are gonna disagree about. I have no sympathy whatsoever for the season ticket holders who are complaining that they can't resell, resell their tickets for three X and four X. You've got season tickets. I do. And um, I think, you know what you bought the tickets to be a hockey fan. You, if you bought these thinking that this was a stock, well, welcome to the, the stock going down, go to your games, be a fan sit in the seats. Yeah, I, I, I didn't buy when Before I realized I was going to cover the team, I was like, I don't want to say I was the first person to buy tickets, but 
I bet you I was in the top 100 of people who bought season tickets right away. Started with two, and now I'm up to seven seats. Now, I don't resell them because my friends go to the games. So they go. To, so my tickets are all gone, basically. Um, but when I bought the tickets, I bought them as a fan. I mean, I used to go to every Ranger game, no matter what the weather was, because back in New York, sometimes sometimes <laughs> that's, a, that's a something <laughs> yeah sometimes there's some, there's a there's a little bit of a trouble to get to the get to get to the garden you know here in vegas we don't have that issue but the point is yeah when i when i bought my seats i bought them with the with the understanding that i was going to go to all 41 games and and i didn't know we were going to make the playoffs the first year but and then i didn't realize i was going to wind up working for las vegas advisor covering a team so it's kind of like yeah, my, my intentions when buying season tickets was not as a commodity or, or a uh, future asset or a way of passive income, so to speak. Well, I, I, I know that you've got a big trip up north uh, coming up here in the next hour or so. So let's let's try and do a short episode. But I want to end with a prediction and I want to end with a contest that we can open up to our fans and the prize for the, the contest will be the incredible, the incredible opportunity to go have pizza with Joe and I. So oh, here's that's interesting. So and, and Joe has no idea where I'm going with this, and I didn't either. We do so not. Help. We we, do, we <laughs> do not. We we have no pregame notes. <laughs> no, no, we no, we just we, straight wing it. We but, don't have a producer that sits with us and says, "Okay, boys, this is what we're going to discuss in block A." Block B and Block C. We just wing it. Well, this is a very relevant question, and and I'll pose it to you. The rules for the fans are: if it happens, the person who is closest to the package wins the pizza dinner with Joe and I. The question is: will the Golden Knights trade for Jack Eichel? And if the Golden Knights trade for Jack Eichel, What's going back the other way? To Buffalo. Yeah. To Buffalo. So the first question is, Joe, do you think the trade is actually going to get done? I'm going to have no. to say yes because I want the comp I want the contest. To I, I don't I don't think the trade gets done. I, I just think um I don't think it's a good I don't think it's a good move. I know and you know the Golden Knights have historically Year in and year out, even though it's only been four years, at the trade deadline or during free agency, they go for the biggest shining star available. And they've done that. Stone, Pacioretty, Petrangelo. They've done it every year. They brought in big names. And Eichel's a big name. But here's the piss situation. Petrangelo is a winner. A Stanley Cup winner and a captain. Mark Stone he was stuck in Ottawa, but he's, a, he's an excellent player. Pacioretty, captain of Montreal, a proven goal scorer, a sniper. Jack Eichel, what has he won, Eddie? Now, I know he plays in Buffalo, but what has he won? I don't think he's made a playoff game. Has he ever played in a playoff game? Okay. You, all of those points are exactly 100% correct. Jack Eichel is eight years younger than Max Pacioretty. He's five years younger or six years younger than Mark Stone. His points per game average is close to a point a game, if not more, playing for arguably uh, the worst franchise in the NHL over the course of the time since, since he was drafted. Um, I understand the animosity and the uncomfortable feeling that people will have about making this trade. But if we take a look at what the golden Knights are very quietly doing, signing Zach white cloud to a, a six year deal at a very, very favorable 2.75 M, uh, million AAV signing a, a free agent defenseman. It looks like they're quietly adjusting their salary a little bit. Um, as they wiggle their way toward making a deal. I, I don't know if it's the best thing for the organization, but I do think that the trade is going to happen. And okay. um, I'm going to really catch a B 
beating for what I think is going to go back the other way. But I'm going to go and, and step right on in it, and I'm going to say Shea Theodore is going back. Um, Brendan Brisson, the number one, first round pick who is tearing it up at the University of Michigan, is going back. And uh, depending on what Buffalo potentially thinks of uh, the ability to flip Riley Smith's expiring deal, uh, he could very well be a part of the package. And then there will be uh, a couple of draft picks, maybe the third rounder that they got from the Rangers in the Revo deal. And I also expect that there will be a third team involved um, that will probably pick up a draft pick or something like that to eat some of the salary because Buffalo seems intent and sticking to the point that they are not going to retain any of Jack Eichel's salary. Yeah, but, so, the, but what you're missing here, Eddie, and I didn't mean to interrupt, bro, the longer this drags on, the price of Eichel keeps on dropping. It should. It's, it's, it's already dropped because teams know now <laughs> Buffalo – is in a bad spot. You know, he, he hasn't had the operation. If you get him, what are you going to do with him? See, here's the problem with the Vegas Golden Knights, and everybody's talking, oh, you can do a Kucherov. You can bring him in, put him on LTIR, and then activate him. Well, he's going to go on LTIR anyway. And then activate him for the first game of the playoffs. And you're Kucherov, play Kucherov was a $10 million proof that that works, wasn't he? Yeah, but he knows the system. He's played in Tampa Bay. You got you got Jack Eichel coming into a brand new system. He'll He's be able not, he'll be able to skate with the team for for a couple of months before they ever activate him. It's not like he he, he won't have any practice time. Doesn't he? Once he comes off LTIR, he can go on the roster. When he's healthy enough to start skating, he I, I believe. And please, if somebody knows that I'm just you know wrong with this, don't hesitate to speak up. But I'm pretty sure that as soon as he's healthy post surgery, he can start skating with the team and practicing with the team. And his and and, his, and the salary doesn't doesn't go on the roster. The sac the, he's not an active player till they activate him. Can he skate with the team, or does he have to skate by himself? I think he can skate with the team. I don't know. I don't but know the answer to that I, question. And, and I, I asked our I, I asked our good friend Steve Carp. And he is of the same mind, but neither of us are, are absolutely positive, to be very honest. You know, this is probably something that we should okay, have asked. We Eddie, should have asked Eddie, Jesse Granger. Eddie, here's my point, though. And I here's my point. Actually, here's my question. Let's say, for argument's sake, the Knights do make this trade. They send another boatload of assets and draft picks, which they've been giving away, like you give away sand at the beach. Okay, fine. Come on, dude. Halloween, on. Ca Halloween candy. The way you give yeah, away you Halloween him, candy. Yeah. You put them on LTIR and you activate them for the playoffs. Okay, fine. Let me ask you this question. What do you do next September, October, when the new season starts and you cannot fit them? I don't the, – the, the salary cap may be going up one or two million. It's not going up five or six million. Well, you will have, you will have taken Shea Theodore's salary out of the equation – you will take in Riley Smith's five plus million out of the equation, and you probably have to move one more body. And, and who do you replace these players with? Jack Eichel is not. Jack Eichel's a band aid because all you're doing you're, is you're, you're telling me a generational uh, what appears to be a generational score. The he was either no, the first with this. You're okay, telling me he's so he, a band aid. Okay, you know what, Eddie? Let's let the Vegas Gold Knights become Toronto A. They because already are. Where, they are. They're and, already and, top and, heavy. I showed yeah. you that graphic and, on the uh, the screen and, of how much money they've got sunk. And then Ed, and Edmonton, the same situation. Edmonton and Toronto, top loaded with big salaries on top. What have they won? Nothing. And you know why? You have to be able, especially in the playoffs, you have to be able to roll four lines because if you only have one line, teams can shut down one line. But if you have a balanced scoring attack from line one to line two to line three, and you have a, a bunch of four checkers on line four, you can roll them constantly. And, and DeBoer, last night was the first game technically that DeBoer was able to roll four lines. And if you look at the minutes of the game, everybody was pretty much balanced ice time. You, If you get Eichel and you purge the lineup 
and you start putting in entry level contracts to fill the void. Is two is two players purging the lineup? Two players off the roster purging the lineup? No, but well, who's the two players? Are you talking Shea, Riley, Shea Theodore and Riley Smith? White, okay, so, white. Listen, if they gave if they gave White Cloud six uh, six years and two point seven five million, that ain't to play third pairing minutes. You agree with that, right? Or what you're not looking at is it possible that they gave him that contract because Buffalo said we'll take White Cloud, but we're not taking him because he's up for he's a restricted free agent. Sign him to a contract, and this way we know what we're getting. We like the player, and we know we're getting him at a pretty good price. Have you ever thought about that? I he I could thought, be part. He could I, be part of the deal. I I thought about that for a second. I I don't think it's true. I think that Buffalo's more interested in Nick Hague, who had Isaac, a good game last night. By the who way, who had a had a fantastic game. Had a fantastic game last night. Six, yep. seven shots, one and one and one. Took another penalty, but eh, you know, whatever. But he's taking he's taking quite a bit of he's taking, I think, three penalties or four penalties in the last two games. Yeah. His between his shot and Coglin's shot, they are absolute bombs. I, I don't bombs. think I don't think that they can part with um Shea Theodore and White Cloud. Um I think that, I mean, of all the players that's most attractive that has a little bit of con- contract left, it's Theodore and Tuck, probably. Okay, right? so let me let me ask you this question, Eddie. If Buffalo says we want, well, and we'll, and they tell they tell the Knights, you can decide. We either want Theodore or White Cloud. Who are the Vegas Knights given to Buffalo? I tough think question, right? it, it is, it is a tough question. I think that um, Theodore is, a, will always be a better defender than Shane Theod- Shea Theodore will ever be. I don't know. And I don't suspect that. Well, wait, wait, that repeat that again. You, you, you meant Theodore would be a better defender than White Cloud? No, White Cl- the Theodore will never be as good a defender. As white, as cloud. white cloud is. As white cloud. And but, wait, but hold on, office, hold on. Yeah. No, no I, I'm, go, I'm going right there. The other side of it is clearly Theodore's offense doesn't have anywhere near the upside. Uh, white cloud's upside on the on the O side isn't anywhere near Theodore's. That's what I was. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, okay. All right. So the question, yeah, yeah. the question becomes, the question becomes, offense or defense. I mean, you have Braden McNabb's contract coming up, right? A defense, defend, defensive defender, right? Well, I think White Cloud has an offensive upside. I don't know that Shea Theodore will ever be a a full all around uh, defenseman like Petran. I mean, Petrangelo for all the miles he skates and all the roaming and roving he does around the ice, he's a really solid defender. I mean, if he needs to, I mean, he knows he defends the game. You and I have talked a number of times that, you know, Shea Theodore is, is not an all around. He's not a great defender. So if you, if you took apples to apples, White Cloud is younger. He's on a much more favorable contract. He's on that contract for more years than, than Shea Theodore. And if you're looking to slot it, Dollars and cents wise, I think it's probably Theodore that goes. Okay. I don't know. That's a, that would be, I wouldn't want to make that decision because I, I think White Cloud has a lot of upside to him. I think he has a, a term, and we've talked about it since we, when he, he first had his first cup of coffee. This, you know, this kid, he's got it. And, and, and I it, absolutely and believe and that it, he does. And as long as Martinez, Petrangelo, um, and Theodore there and McNabb, it's going to be hard for White Cloud to break the top four. Well, what kind of raise is McNabb in line for? He his contract is up too. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I could I could see him. 
I think McNabb's going to have to take a little haircut if he wants to stay here next year, which opens up a few bucks. But I think White Cloud is a top four defenseman. And then in the maturation process for the Knights, as they continue to groom, clearly Dylan Coughlin is first in line as the next as the next guy up. If they move somebody in that core group, Dylan Coughlin is the guy who's going to. And if they do it this year, Dylan Coughlin will most likely be paired with McNabb the rest of the year. Because Dylan Coughlin, as we both said, has an absolute cannon, right? Cannon. Uh, uh, cannon. He's got a cannon. Right. Arguably the hardest shot in the organization, and that includes Nick Hague. So the contest is, and you can't win the contest by saying, no, the trade doesn't get made. So let's get that little, don't try and kink our little system here. Up for grabs is a Metro pizza dinner with Joe and I. And if you're really engaging and funny and, and know a little bit about hockey, we might even throw in a guest spot on a future episode of Hockey Nights in Vegas. But what you have to do is in the comments down below, don't message us on Facebook with your, um, your, your thoughts here. Oh, my God, I've gone to hell. What's happened? I've become orange. Yeah, I was just going to say, you look Holy like Donald God. Trump. Hey, you'd be nice to him. Um, I have no idea what happened, but it's pretty frightening. So we better, we better end this while I, my sun tanning, um, we're not looking at Eddie. We're not interested in what oh. you look at. It's what you're saying. Okay, good. Thank so. you. Cause if it, if this was based on appearance, then, well, you know, we'd be out of business. All right. Contest, win a pizza, maybe win a guest spot. You need to tell us in the comments when the Jack Eichel trade goes down, what are, the Vegas Golden Knights sending back to Buffalo. Um, the contest will be open until the trade gets made. So you, I have a question for yeah. those who want to participate. Do they have, in order to win the pizza dinner, do they have to get the trade exactly the way it goes down? No. Or are we going to give a pizza dinner to whoever gets the closest? It's going to be closest because there's probably yeah. going to be three or four or five parts to the compensation okay. package going back. Um, so we'll count draft choices. We'll and count, I, and, we'll count like, prospects, we'll count roster players, and we'll count uh, LTIR players. <clears throat> Alex Stuck. And uh, like in a casino, the floor decision is final. Is that correct? Correct. The, the, so judge, jury, are, and, yeah. the judge, jury, and executioners and are right here. Yes. It's final. Fine. It's final, final, um, and that's it. So – that's going to wrap up episode two of season two, the trick or treat golden Knights um, edition pump the brakes, folks. Everything's going to be okay. They're eight games into an 82 season. The kids are starting to play better. The Vegas, not the Vegas golden Knights are going to be a okay. They're going to make the playoffs and they're going to get healthy again. So every take, take, I, if you meditate, like take, take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay, VGK fans. Joe's got to go. He's got a, uh, some sort of gambling adventure lined up for the next uh, next few days. I think he's going to try and ransack a casino in Mesquite or something Ab like that. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, we'll be back uh, somewhere in between the road trip. The Vegas Golden Knights are on the, heading out on the road. They're going to Canada. Thankfully, all their players <laughs> are vaccinated. Uh, Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal. And then uh, they're sure. going to have a very special guest uh, next Sunday uh, at the Little Caesars Arena when I make an appearance in a gold jersey at Little Caesars Arena hoping to get on television. So, okay, that might not happen. But I'm going to the game in Detroit. We'll, uh, we'll do some remote podcasting uh, to keep up with all of you. Thank you for uh, all of your views. Click like down there. Don't forget to enter the contest, and uh, we'll be back to you in the next uh, few days. Say Sounds goodbye, Joe. Sounds good to me. All right. We're out of here. We're out of here.